Bazaar of Baghdad is one of vintage format defining cards. Super powerful, but on a bit of a downswing. I'm going to take a stock dredge list through a prelim and see just how good Necromancy is. Okay, welcome back, Vintage Gamers. Some people needed help firing a prelim, so I'm here to make sure that prelim fires with the minimum 12 players. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time to choose a deck, so I figured I haven't played a lot of Bizarre on the channel recently, so why not play a prelim with Dredge? Typically a pretty good deck to play in a prelim. It's usually good against the kind of metagames that that, that uh, prelims feature. Uh, and this is basically a stock Lord Beerus Dredge list. Basically took the last Beerus Dredge list, and I'm just going to play it as is. Uh, something I usually say, my preface is, I can play Bizarre. I have a pretty good idea of how to play Bizarre in terms of play patterns. Uh, the thing I don't know is, like, the ins and outs to sideboarding with Dredge. That's something that I think my experience is lacking on. Uh, so I wouldn't take any sideboard configurations uh, that I choose to do today as, you know, the Holy Grail that you should copy. Uh, definitely consult, you know, Lord Beerus VODs or, or something like that uh, for you know, more definitive sideboarding tips. But in terms of, like, how to play out the deck, I think I have a pretty good grasp of what's going on. So we're going to play this stock dredge list through a prelim, and we'll see how it goes. Are you interested in weekly vintage metagame recommendations? Do you want to see your deck list played on my channel? Or maybe you are just looking for the best way to support my vintage content. Make sure you check out the Patreon link in the description below. Let's battle. All right, round one of a vintage prelim. I didn't really expect to play in this event, but people needed to help firing the event, so I have joined. I have a, the last winning Lord Beerus dredge deck in front of me. Uh, I don't, I can't really tell you too much about it, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to play it at a reasonable level, and uh, this prelim will go okay. So, round one against BCS. I don't know what BCS is playing. Uh, they are definitely a brewer in other formats. I don't know about Vintage. Uh, I know that my deck needs to mulligan to a bizarre Baghdad. I understand the play patterns of Dredge pretty reasonably. The thing that I would say is lacking in my skill set in Dredge is understanding how to sideboard. Um, that's something I don't really know how to do. Uh, so we'll have to try to make sure we do the best we can. Uh, but in terms of playing it, when to activate Bazaar, that kind of thing, I have a pretty good understanding. So I have a powder here. I think I'd like to keep either Hollow One, Chill, Icarid in my deck. I kind of like the idea of keeping Hollow One, but I could definitely see arguments to keeping a, your fourth Chills or Icarids. I'm going to try keeping Hollow One in the deck, though. Uh, this hand still has no Bazaar. Here's a Bizarre, a Hollow One, a Force of Grief, Black Cards, definitely a keep. We're on the draw. So what I think I'm going to do is keep Force Blue Card, Pitch Grief, Icarid, keep my Dredger in Bizarre. Seems pretty reasonable. We'll draw another card, pitch all of our cards, and then play a Hollow One and still have Force. So not a bad five-card hand. Definitely reasonable. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. But yeah, we're not we're not live on Twitch. This is gonna be a, a recording. So it'll be a little bit different. Hopefully more analytical, but then again, I guess we're playing bizarre. I don't know how analytical I'll be able to be. <laughs> um we'll see. Yeah, when I play the dredge. I usually just copy Lord Beerus's latest list. Lord Beerus is probably the person who plays the Moch Masters of Dredge on the platform. Very competent magician. Uh, and definitely puts thought into the necromancy. So I have no problem just copy-pasting whatever 75 Lord Beerus is playing. We've got Saga Gaming plus Soul Ring. I actually think this misstep is highly valuable here. Countering Soul Ring, turning off the ability to make Saga tokens too fast. Totally acceptable for me to cash in my missed up. Grief. I'm just going to play Bizarre and activate. See where we go from there. Draw two, discard three. Love to hit a blue card so I can hold up force. We did not hit a blue card. So the question is, do I want to keep 
Now, I think the answer is get rid of my force, play two hollow ones, and have second bazaar. It means next turn we'll dredge with the Stinky Dimp without activating in our upkeep, and then we'll play second bazaar and go for, go to town. Yeah. That's my plan. i got to figure out the best way to do this. Maybe I'll have my graveyard like this. Hopefully that'll be large enough for people to see. I have the sun coming right through my eyes, so I think I'm going to close these blinds, even though the natural lighting is really nice. So, a little dimmer, but... Alright, we got a Force of Will pitching Lavinia on this hollow one. That's totally fine. I have another hollow one. All right, they're down to three cards with an Urza Saga. I have a Hollow One and Double Bazaar coming. If they have a main deck Needle, I only get two activations of Bazaar, but that still should be enough. All right, my opponent has a Mana Crypt, so they are still going to make a Construct token here as a 3-3. Three, three. It's, quite, it's quite powerful, actually, the fact that my opponent had the Mana Crypt to replace the Soul Ring. So I'm not going to activate Bazaar in my upkeep because I'd want to... Uh, keep my bizarre here. So I'm going to draw, dredge my Stinkweed Imp, hitting Chill and Narc Amoeba. That's also going to return Silver Smoke Ghoul. At the end of turn. Hit an Icarid, which is great, but didn't hit any uh, dredgers. So play my bizarre. Is there any reason to do this now? I don't know, but I'm just going to do it now. Probably not, but I think it's fine. Maybe I guess if they have a main deck Soul Guide Lantern, it's kind of bad to do this now. Oh, but now I get back a prize amalgams, so feels really good to do this now. So yeah, I mean that worked out really well. Alright. So they're at 13 already. I have a hollow one attacking in. They can make a 3-3, but I have Narc Amoeba, Triple Prized Amalgam, and a Ghoul coming. So I can't imagine my opponent wins this game unless they Vault Key me. That's probably the only way my opponent's winning this game. But they also have a Mana Crypt and 9 life, so... So now my graveyard is kind of in the middle of my uh, board. It's not exactly helpful. Trying to just find the best configuration for you guys. Probably like this. My opponent decided to spin instead of making a construct. Again, I think the only way they win this game is taking infinite turns, so... They won their flip. So if they, like, make a mana... Get a key, play a time vault, take infinite turns, or even better, like, find a blue source, tinker away the crypt kind of deal. Looks like they drew for turn and then spun again before the saga searches, which is really smart. Gives them an extra three looks. They found something they wanted. Okay, that's bad for me. Here's key. They have it. Tinker? Wow, that is disgusting. Brutal. All right. So my opponent takes infinite turns and we lose. Brutal. Maybe I... I don't know. I still like the mental misstep play. I think it was reasonable. That's like a really big detriment right now to playing um, Dredge. You don't exactly have your locked-in game ones like you used to because there's just so many combo decks. So I assume in this matchup we bring in... Wasteland, Strip Mine, Vigor, maybe probably not Noxious. And then don't think we would bring in Shoal. We definitely want Chalice. Um, this is probably like a trim thing, right? Where we just do trim like this and this and it's kind of hard to trim noxious because there's green count but we don't actually care about reviving cards that might not even be correct um, 
Yeah, I have no idea. Like I said, I don't like the idea of trimming like chills or Icarids. Those feel like ways you power through. So I'm going to trim on... I know you can trim on thugs down to like two thugs. I'm sure we can trim on revivals and ghouls. Though, like like I said, trimming on revivals when you're bringing in vigors and need green cards is like kind of bad. I don't know the exact configuration you're supposed to do, but this seems like reasonable enough to me. Maybe I don't even want any ghouls and I just bring in a keep a revival in. It makes me feel like a little bit better. So this like looks like a pretty normal looking dredge configuration. Two thugs. I think it's fine. Pretty sad to lose that game one. We had a pretty powerful hand. Here's a seven card bizarre hand with no interaction, but definitely keeping. They have a ley line. God. We are not having a good time. Uh, I think we activate Bazaar looking for Hollow One Vigor Green card. Maybe even something like Grief. Chalice on zero is at least something. Get rid of these chills that are dead, as well as an Amalgam and cast Chalice on zero. Chalice on zero might help us. Man, I do not like playing this deck. I think I prefer the Vine decks more than Dredge. I don't really like playing Bazaar in general. I feel like you just lose so much agency. But the Counter Vine deck is a lot of agency, so it's kind of a little here, a little there. Uh, am I supposed to activate again now? I mean, I still think we really want to have a hollow one, right? So I'm mean, pitching all of our blue cards kind of shows we don't have a uh, force, but I think that's fine. I'll hold this grief until when we find vigor if I can. But if opponent just plays like a saga here, how can we really ever win, right? Basic planes. Interesting. Wonder if they're initiative tinker then. Can I activate again? Yeah, I can activate again. I kind of have to get all my activations in before they hull breacher me, right? Okay, so now I think I just keep the force over the grief. It gives me a little bit more. I don't know. I, I haven't hit a vigor or a green card, so I really fail to see how we're going to get out of this. Um, I guess I have to force this. Unless I'm just trying to win with hollow one. So what am I more likely to hit bigger green card or hollow one? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just let this resolve and try to win off a hollow one because I don't really see myself hitting like counter this resolve bigger green. Oh, now I'm super screwed because I have to have now I do still need to have bigger green card. Yeah, I mean, this is just super doomed. I do not like playing this deck. Is what it is. I wanted to fire the prelim, make content for people. I haven't played dredge or any kind of bizarre in a while, so it made a lot of sense to. Made a lot of sense to do this, but didn't get there. Well, see you in round two. All right. Round one didn't go our way, but we got round two versus a very powerful Echo Baron. Let's see what we can do. Uh, my opponent kept seven, so they don't get to know that I'm going to Serum Powder here. I am definitely going to Serum Powder here. Uh, nothing on this hand. Nothing on this hand. Powder. Keeping, pa keeping Hollow One, probably. I kind of like the idea of keeping Hollow Ones. And here's a bizarre keep. And let's see what opponent has for us. No interaction on my hand. Underground C preordain. Maybe Doomsday. Could be Doomsday. Activate bizarre. Draw two. Discard three. Discarding. Probably Icarid, Dredger, and other, other Dredger, maybe? I'm trying to figure out. No, I, I know I want to get Icarid in my biggest Dredger in the yard. I don't know like which of these cards is the best. Like, in the world where I activate an upkeep and I miss a dredger in the top four, I definitely want to have Shambling Shell. So it's probably just Shambling Shell. All right, let's get this popped out for y'all. The key thing that happened on that turn was I didn't draw interaction in the form of Force or Grief. So if my opponent has the, you know... Dark Ritual, Doomsday, Cantrip Hand, I just die. 
Ancestral is a good one. The likelihood of me dying here is quite high. Now they have to have like Dark Ritual Doomsday Street Wraith or Dark Ritual Doomsday Gush. Those hands will kill me. I don't have high hopes for this game, considering my Bizarre activation next turn is going to be dredging, so I can't really hit any more pieces of permission. There's really no world in which I'm not dredging. I just have to clock my opponent before they kill me, which doesn't seem possible. So far, my opponent's decks have just seemed more powerful than my Bizarre deck, which is not a good sign. Bottom, bottom off of Preordain, Petal... Activate and upkeep, dredge four, hit another Icarid, two forces, no dredger notably, grief, dredge three, pitch dredger, dredger, amalgam I guess, this game looks so whack, alright, eat, the grief with the Icarid trigger double amalgam and then dredge four. Man, okay. I mean, I'm not even clocking my opponent quickly. Really not a great spot to be in. I think we're just super dead. I guess what I'm going to really have to think about is. Is this video with me getting clobbered by, by my opponents uh, going to be worth posting? Probably. I think there's things to learn when you die. Even if, like, I wouldn't even say a lot of any of these deaths have been because of my decisions. Just feels like our deck has been poofed. Time to unrestrict Grave Rule? Probably not. <laughs> probably not um yeah i don't even know what to say draw better choose better decks i'm no lord beerus i'll tell you that much like when you do mulligans the mulligan is the straightforward part of dredge you have to go and when you find a bazaar you keep and then playing it out there's you know sequencing and in how you activate when you activate and what you get rid of but for the most part you could probably make a you know a, a script or an algorithm or something that optimally plays dredge i think like a lot of the skill expression in dredge is in sideboarding um there's obviously like some amount of like corner case activating timing windows and pitching cards that helps you like when you're playing around certain pieces of hate things like ravenous trap um when you're activating in, in regards to opponent having a ley line so there's definitely complications but like for a basic like play around nothing dredge algorithm i feel like it would be pretty codable okay so there's an urza saga which is a good thing because it means we're not getting Doomsday. However, with Lotus Petal out and double Underground Sea, it's likely my opponent is on a Beseech combo deck. So we could just get combo killed anyways. Opponent also has had Ancestral Time Walk, which is not great for our home team here. We do have two 3-3s, three two Icarids. Not very many Dredgers. I haven't even been able to get these silver smoke ghouls in the yard. I have been having to like pitch the dredgers back into the yard because I haven't hit any dredgers. But what, what I'm trying to say is I don't think that there's zero skill expression or, you know, nuance to playing dredge. Uh, it's very clear to me when I play against players like Lord Beerus in comparison to non, you know, necromancy mains, that there's a very large difference in playing dredge versus an experienced dredge pilot and versus a not experienced dredge pilot. But Bizarre and Dredge do follow a formula for sure. 
So my opponent is currently doing some thinking here. I think the likely assumption one could make off of that is my opponent probably has a Besiege the Mirror, which they can bargain off of Saga. The problem or concern from the opponent's angle is that bargaining a Saga on stage two is um, all in. It's very all in. And if my hand contains like blue card, force, mind break trap, something like that, they could get really, really punished. So that's probably what they're thinking about here. From my point of view, I have nothing. Uh, my upkeep, planning out my next turn is like all I can really do from here if I get a next turn. And that would be upkeep two Icarid triggers with the triggers on the stack, activate Bizarre of Baghdad, dredging Shambling Shell, hope to hit another dredger off of the dredge three. If I don't hit another dredger, I do draw one, which maybe you can hit like a, 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 I guess it would have to hit a grief or something um and then i would pitch wow we're gonna get another turn here okay so another thing is this urza saga is only making um two twos right now which is nice the problem is we're just not clocking our opponent fast enough i think if we had our game one round one hand like that game ended on turn three where my opponent played vault key and killed us right uh but i had lethal on my next upkeep whereas here i think it's very unlikely i'm gonna have lethal Three, six, nine, twelve. It's possible, but I'd have to hit really well on dredgers into creeping chills, right? Like if my dredger hits like two chills and a Golgari Grave Troll, and then my third and then my Golgari Grave Troll hits a third creeping chill, that's nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, and they block one going to eighteen. So that would be lethal. So like there are a series of dredges here that does kill my opponent, but it's like all three creeping chills in the top x cards i don't even know if i've exiled any creeping chills yet i haven't exiled any creeping chills yet so it's possible i didn't really consider what cards were in serum powder exile but that is something you needed to do uh notably double narc amoeba notably i have zero force of wills so if my opponent notices that with three force of wills in my graveyard one force of will in exile one negation in my graveyard I, they should know i have nothing or close to nothing. So my opponent did go land, go to second main phase. Something you can do on Magic Online is fish for F6 information. By playing a, a land and going to second main phase, if I was like F6, for instance, it would immediately pass into the main phase, and then they would know that I had hit F6. Now, that's not definitive information, that I have no interaction, but it is, you know can be used as a hint or a bait. Um, so basically, I'm not going to F6 unless I think my opponent's turn is done and I'm just trying to save time. So that's why I didn't F6 during this turn, even though I have no interaction. I need to represent and make my opponent scared that I do have interaction. But that's about it. It's also just possible my opponent is, you know, playing multiple games of Magic. Let's we'll see what happens here. My opponent has passed the second main phase and is tapping blue, blue, and looks like they're tinkering. Notably, if my opponent is tinkering for a Citadel, my opponent has already played a land drop. So if their Citadel... And this pedal's going away. So if this Citadel bricks, or even if they, like play some amount of spells and then brick and then i have a shot for lethal damage this is kind of interesting let's see what happens they have a sphinx in the main we die but it's likely my opponent's only tinker target here is a citadel though what they could do is they could tinker for black lotus black lotus underground sea beseech the mirror bargain beseech the mirror saga and then beseech the mirror into yogwill with lotus Lotus Petal, Ancestral Time Walk. Storm count is... None? <laughs> Storm count is just Tinker. So I'm not sure they have a deterministic Beseech Yogwill line, but they do have Lotus, Lotus Petal, Ancestral Time Walk. So they could easily go Beseech, Yogwill, Petal, Lotus, Ancestral, Time Walk, Preordain, Preordain, and like set up for the next turn. Because they do have a time walk turn. I think that's got to be what my opponent's thinking about, right? 
I think my opponent has a Besiege, doesn't know if they have a lethal Besiege, and are considering either getting a Citadel or... Okay, so they just went for a Citadel. So now my opponent notably played an Island here, so they could Brick on this Citadel. So now my opponent's at 17. Uh, any amount of damage I do to them is very relevant in turning off the Citadel's functionality. So we might still be able to pull out this game. That would be incredible. I, I would put my odds of winning this game extremely low. Uh, all right, Dredge, Shambling Shell. I hit Golgari, Grave Troll, and Creeping Chill, so I have a really big chance of hitting exactly what I talked about last turn. All right, putting Golgari, Grave Troll, and double School in the yard. Creeping Chill. I think we're going to come out on top here, or close to coming out on top here. Uh, Icarid eating Shell... Icarid eating imp. Kind of want all my ghouls to come in. Actually, they don't probably don't matter, but Dredge Golgari Grave Troll looking to hit more creeping chills. Did not hit more creeping chills. So but I do have how much damage? 12 damage. So I needed to hit another creeping chill there to kill my opponent. So now we could lose this game. Wow. I needed to hit two chills and I hit one chill. Damn. I only have 12 cards left in my deck. So my opponent's at 2. Citadel pretty turned off. Damn, wow. I thought we were going to kill them there, but we were came up one chill short. How many chills? So I have one chill in my hand. I hit one chill there, and it means that I have two chills in my bottom 12. That, fi that sounds like a little statistically unlucky, but not like horribly unlucky. All right, opponent has a fetch, has a Black Lotus off of their Saga. I assume something bad's happening to me here. Yeah, Demonic Tutor, Yogg will kill me. Damn, wow. Crazy. I'm going to let them, I'm going to play this out because if my opponent brain freezes me and they aren't prepared, they could die to chills. What they have to do is, um, what they need to do is they need to float a bunch of mana using Black Lotus and then um, brain freeze me. And then with all the creeping chill triggers on the stack, counter their own brain freeze or simply ancestral target me. I'm going to let them play it out. Uh, I, I do trust Andreas to make the correct plays here with the brain freeze, but uh, it's kind of good to show everyone, I think. Because this is something that comes up when you're playing the bre breach brain freeze combo deck, is you need to be ready to beat uh, different things from the graveyard. Uh, the two big ones are Creeping Chills out of the Dredge deck and Gaia's Blessing out of Oath decks. Oh, I have no dredgers in my yard. <laughs> uh, okay. So I made a maybe a little bit of a mistake here and pitched too many silver smoke ghouls instead of putting dredgers in my graveyard. So I actually can't hit creeping chill and my opponent can just ancestral me out. That's a mistake on my end. Though Yeah, wow. I just have no dredgers in my yard. Ah. Very silly of me. My opponent is playing this, it looks like, in a way that they would um, they would be winning anyways. But I definitely made a slight mistake here. And there was just no reason to put these ghouls into play because they didn't really matter. I should have just put all of my dredgers back that I had into the yard so that I could play around something like this. Very cool. I'd just like to see a couple of bit. I guess I don't need to see any more of my opponent's deck because... I have drawn all my cards, and I'm going to die. All right. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So that was a slight misplay on my part, but I like, like I said, I think I'm pretty much deterministically dead if my opponent understands playing around chill. It kind of felt like they did understand that uh, in the way they were sequencing, so... So, although my opponent is a Breach Graveyard-based combo deck, I don't think you typically want to bring in Leyline of the Void. Uh, the reasoning 
for that is my opponent has many ways to kill me outside of breach combo uh with sagas and vault keys and, and tinker and citadel and that kind of thing hitting this is just like hitting a small section of their plan instead uh i like the same thing we did last time where we bring in vigors and strip mines and wastelands i'm gonna make the same board plan where i did last time where i take out thugs and trim on revivals and take out these silver smoke ghouls um i think that's like the the idea here in this matchup but uh could be wrong so yeah um slight mistake on my part but i do think we were uh going to die regardless because what my opponent can really do there is um with the with the creeping chill triggers on the stack they can they can cast more ancestrals basically so by going three at a time they can you know stack that in a way where um I think that's actually what they ended up doing, right? Because they cast four Ancestrals on us to draw us out. So if we had dredged, uh, the Creeping Chills would go on the stack and they would just Ancestral us again. Uh, very smart, very smart. Cool, though. I think that at least gave us a reason to post this video. So <laughs> uh, I'm kind of happy for that. All right, here we go. I, another game one for my dredge deck lost. This time I have a, a seven card keep, but again, I, I, my seven card keeps don't feature counter magic or grief, which is really not great. <laughs> you want to keep seven card bizarre hand with hollow one, a dredger, and some permission, you know? All right, my opponent has mulligan to four looking for interaction versus my deck or a combo. My opponent has mul uh, conceded the game. Okay. Okay noted uh all right well i will go to the next game <laughs> sometimes that's magic bazaar of baghdad forces some unusual happenings i would say something about bazaar of baghdad that uh, Bazaar of Baghdad is quintessential and historical vintage, and is going to continue to exist in vintage because it is format defining and pillar of the format, right? But it is, of course, worth noting that Bazaar of Baghdad does not produce, typically produce, good games of magic or back and forth games of magic or uh, that kind of like healthy magic is, is some words that some people would describe it. Bizarre Bag that absolutely can produce back and forth and interesting and very interesting games of Magic. I think one of my favorite matches of all time is Oath versus Dredge, the finals of a PTQ. It's me versus Ryan Wingtisar. Uh, if you've never seen that match of Magic, I highly recommend going to watch it. It should be... I can't remember exactly what the video is called, but it should be like Oath, PTQ, win, or... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll find it out. But, um... Um, it's like, uh, it's one of my PTQ wins and that match of magic was so intense down to the wire, down to one card, uh, and just like really amazing. So it's called, uh, vintage PTQ bug oath featuring pernicious deed. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the very finals of that tournament are one of my favorite matches of all time. So like I said, dredge and bizarre can produce, uh, really interesting games of magic. They just tend to not be. And it's something that, you know, people, you know, Bizarre can be kind of negatively reflecting of the format and new players aren't really happy to play against Bizarre. And I'm sometimes not happy to play against Bizarre in some of my videos because I think it doesn't showcase. Like when you play a Bizarre game, it makes the game all about the Bizarre deck instead of about your deck, which can be like uh, restrictive in terms of, uh, you know, creativity and expression, especially when I'm mulliganing here. Um... But, like I said, it's not going away. And so that's more, something I'm really happy about right now is that Bizarre is only less than 10% of the vintage metagame currently as of filming this video, uh, which I think is a really good thing. Like, it's okay to have Bizarre existing in the format, but you don't want Bizarre to be the best deck, and you definitely don't want it to be 20% of the metagame if you can help it. All right, I have not found a Bizarre in any of my hands, so that's pretty bad. All right, I have still not found a Bizarre in any of my hands. Uh, I will keep... Hollow one, hollow one, probably Wasteland and Prized Amalgam. Forcible and Grief get a lot worse when you don't have a lot of starting hand. All right, I'm going to mulligan to two. 
I'm going to mulligan to one. All right, I get to keep a one card hand. I will put all six of these cards on the bottom of my... This is the best one card hand in all of Vintage, so... Can't complain too much, but... I need to beat my opponent with just a single Bazaar of Bag Baghdad. And they kept seven, so I, uh... I don't have high hopes, but we'll see what happens. Ancestral target them. Okay, so... Not a good start for us. Into double restricted mana sources, triple restricted mana sources. Well, I got a Bazaar of Baghdad. I can't activate and still play a hollow one, but I do think I want to play around possible hull breacher. Maybe, I guess I can't play around hull breacher, right? All right, so that in that case, I'm just going to hold my Bazaar activation until their end step. That will play around um, Soul Guide Lantern, I guess. I don't know. I'm not really. I don't really have the capability to play around many things, considering I don't have a hand. But uh, if I like make them hold breacher, oh my god, they have a strip mine in their deck too. Their combo deck has a strip mine. Brutal. Do they have a hold breacher as well? No. All right. Well, the game continues. I have dredgers here. Uh, that's about as best as could have gone. So I have I have two dredgers here, a five and a four. Uh, draw three. Okay. All right. Uh, draw for turn. Replace it with dredge five. I hit no other dredgers in a creeping chill. Not good. Very bad, actually. Was really hoping to hit other dredgers. <laughs> uh, not great. Doing it the hard way. Pretty sure we're down gonna lose this, but... Not much I can do. I kept a one-card hand. Not a bad one-card hand, but a bad one-card hand. The strip mine out of the combo deck is chef's kiss. Just completely brutal. Is this going to be like fetch? Oh, I guess they can't... F yeah, I guess they could theoretically play a Sphinx here, right? Yeah, <laughs> very nice. All right, I'm going to drag and then concede probably. Yeah. I die. All right, well, I don't think I'm welcome in Baghdad. All right, I won't give up. The necromancy must continue. Opponent has kept seven. We're on the draw. Powder. Powder. Keep. Here's a seven. Here is a seven. Let's go. I have a seven with grief, misstep, bizarre, dredgers. Force, God, great, awesome. I lost a lot of tools in my first two powders, but this hand is totally worth it. So I've got Force Blue card, Grief Black card, Dredger Icarid Bazaar. Can't complain about that. Volcanic Island Luris from the opponent. Maybe some kind of Breach Luris deck or Jeskai. Should be interesting. All right, Black Lotus, brutal, brutal, all right, seven card Black Lotus hand, does it, do we beat it with our Force Bazaar hand? Pass. All right, so then a question we do have to ask ourselves, Grief is a card I'm less familiar with in Dredge, are we going to be casting Grief before we activate Bazaar, are we going to be casting Grief before, you know, before you put Bazaar into play, cast Grief, trigger on the stack, activate Bazaar. Those are things that I don't know. I know that would be pretty important if our deck was running Bridge from Below, which is not. Most modern dredge lists don't run Bridge from Below anymore. I think I am interested in Grief, Pitch, Silver Smoke Ghoul. I guess there's no reason not to play Bazaar first. Maybe I could like activate on the spot or something. I'm not sure. Maybe I just want to get more information, but like I kind of want to have the information of grief before I activate Bazaar, right? That's my as my my gut instinct is. I want to have the ability to activate Bazaar if something happens like this. And I want to be able to 
actively bizarre knowing more about their hand. So like here, they're going to try to brainstorm and hide cards from grief. I'm definitely going to mental mist up brainstorm. Uh, and if my opponent like forces back or something here, there's a possibility I just activate bizarre and get a blue card for force. Something worth considering. All right, let's put this stack at like a smart player. Take a look at their hand. Dig, dress down, time walk, badlands. Interesting. So they are going to get close to dig through timing, but maybe I'll have a force up by that time. I think just taking them off of time walk makes more sense to me. Dress down is pretty bad in the matchup, so. I'm going to take them off dig. Oh, take them off time walk and then force them onto like a high cost dig and, and maybe have a force. I don't think there's any reason not to let that go to the yard. Let's activate. I didn't find a blue card, but I did find a grief. So I could pitch Icarid, Thug, Shell, and then Grief pitching Chill. It does mean this Forcible is never happening, but I definitely want all of these cards in my yard anyways. And I can just take their dig, and it puts us in a pretty good spot. So not bad. Seven card. We finally find found a seven card bizarre hand that also had um, interaction. So this is this is what the dredge deck is supposed to be looking like. Very nice. All right. So my opponent has Badlands, Dress Down, Luris, Lotus. That's not a bad place for us to be. Let me get this graveyard out here for you guys. <sighs> All right, so Icarid, oh, they got to play. This is going to be a dress down at end step, so it's going to be out during my turn. And what this, this is going to do is mean my Icarid doesn't have haste. Though it will also stay in play, right? Actively, yeah, all right, cool. So I will still return Icarid here. I'm just going to activate this in my upkeep, dredge four, dredge three, pitch all of my cards, trigger two, narc amoebas, a creeping chill, an Icarid, I'll get rid of a grief, and then dredge four, chill, no um, silver smoke ghouls in my yard. No new dredgers besides the shambling shells. All right, so this Icarid won't go away, which I think makes it worth putting in play. All right. My opponent has to find something good here. Put Luris in hand. Play Luris off of Lotus, replay Lotus. That's pretty good. They can start cycling dress downs, maybe. All right. Oh, wait. I didn't read that it's every end step. <laughs> I, uh, I had no idea that Icarid triggered on every end step. So, hey, hey, we're all learning together. <laughs> I definitely should not have eaten my grief then. I don't have enough fuel to be doing something like that. Uh, but that's good. That's a nice learning moment. I had no idea, by the way. Just zero an idea. <laughs> all right, dredge three, dredge three. Put all these in my yard. Uh, now I don't have a lot of black creatures, though, so I get rid of a grief. I can get rid of a shambling shell and a shambling shell and dredge four. Got a bunch more griefs. All right, so I definitely made a mistake there. Don't know how much that mistake really matters. I might run out of uh, black cards for for for, for Icarid though, so definitely could cost me. My opponent went down to three. 
Though they can do the end step dress down thing, which will turn off all my Icarids, but they'll probably die to creeping chills at that point. I would think we have 15 cards remaining. Oh, there's only one chill left in our deck. So we have two Narc Amoebas, one chill. So if my opponent end steps a dress down with Luris. They can gain three life back to six, end step address down with Luris, go to four off of this, maybe go to one off of Creeping Chill. They can cycle address down at every turn with Luris, meaning I have to return prized, but I'm going to return prized amalgams next turn. I'll at least return a single Icarid to trigger prized amalgams. Kind of interesting, actually. The whole cycle dress down Luris here looks pretty good. Uh-oh. Vampiric Tutor is not a good sign. My opponent has put themselves to one. So right now, they are dead to Creeping Chill, Narc Amoeba, even if they attack with Luris. But they could have a win here with Vampiric Tutor. Definitely possible. They also have a ton of mana because they have Black Lotus replay Black Lotus off of Luris. Man, if we lose another game one, it's going to be so sad. But I, at least I made a mistake in this game. <laughs> uh, hmm. All right, so they're at one. They can draw the card they want with a recast dress down, but then they have to use their Lotus. If they, I mean, assume they're kind of, I assume they're playing Breach, right? So maybe they have Vamp for Breach. Oh, wait a second, though. No, it doesn't matter. Because Dress Down will be the card for turn with Luris. They didn't attack with Luris before this. So they don't have the ability to like dress down and still gain three with Luris. I don't know if that's a punt. We'll have to see what happens here. My opponent also notably might not have enough cards in their yard to play around the Creeping Chill like uh, our last opponent did. All right. So they played the Dress Down from Yard, uh, drawing the card off of Vampiric. Turning off their Luris's lifelink, here they go with Breach. So, Breach with six cards in Yard, including a Black Lotus, a Vampiric, and a Time Walk. Though, theoretically, they don't even have to do anything other than Time Walk this turn, because they can replay their Breach from the Yard using Luris next turn. If they have... They have land in their hand, obviously, right? So they could play land and... I don't know. My opponent is actually kind of in trouble in a, because of the number of cards that are in their yard make it hard for them to use Breach. I'm definitely letting them play this out. I don't think it's deterministic at all. Kind of interested to see what happens. But like I said, they can always simply go to the next turn, right? So they can definitely go Time Walk, and then they still have the ability to Breach on the next turn, and they'll still have Lotus, theoretically. They could always disc, you know, Exile, Brainstorm, Dig Through Time, Gush, and cast Time Walk. They're going to cast Brainstorm, Exiling Time Walk, Dig, and Gush. Interesting. Very interesting. Huh. Okay, a fetch is super good here. No fetch. Fetch would have been great. Would have put a... Oh, I guess a fetch is not good here because they're at one. Ah, uh, they really... I think they needed to attack with Luris before they did anything in this because they really needed to get the ability to fetch. Uh, not attacking with Luris could be a punt that cost my opponent the game. There are definitely games of vintage that come down to these very small things. I had a game in one of my last videos where I played the wrong land. I played a... Not, I played a... Uh, 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 a tropical instead of playing a fetch, and it almost cost me the entire match. My opponent just cast Lightning Bolt. So now they can cast Black Lotus. Do they have Brain Freeze? But they did lose their Lightning Bolt. Do they have Brain? They don't have it. Wow. I, I, I have to say, I think my opponent may have made some mistakes in this one. I, it's hard to say without knowing like the contents of their hand, but... 
something seems off here. But we will definitely take it. So in this case, my opponent is on breach again. But this time, my opponent's breach deck is very different from round two. Round two, my opponent was playing a Tinker breach deck. This time, they're playing a Lurus breach deck. And I actually think Ley Lines are great against a Lurus breach deck. The biggest reason is because my opponent is using the graveyard much more uh, than my round two opponent. They don't have Tinker for Citadel. They have this Lurus going on. So I am interested this time in bringing in Leyline of the Void. I think I'm going to not bring in Vigor because my opponent's likely not to have Leyline because they have Lurus. If they instead do a, you know, like a 360, they bring in Ley Lines, don't reveal Lurus, then in game three we can make a change. Uh, I don't know if my opponent has Wastelands or Sagas is another thing. Uh, so it's a little hard to make that change as well. I think I still just want to like board these six cards i don't know I don't, I don't know the silver smoke ghoul is just a card that i never found to be super great i think what i want to do is bring in these ley lines and some of these strip mines and just go like that i kind of like this idea i think i'm going to keep the revivals because my opponent could easily be a wasteland deck i'm gonna try this i don't know how good this is but i'm gonna try this that was odd it was an odd game All right, so my seven card hand does not have a bizarre this time. My opponent did reveal Lurus, so we're not getting Ley Lined. They kept a Mulligan to six. I go to Mulligan to six. This one has a Ley Line, but no bizarre still. Does my opponent keep their six? That's the next question. Doesn't matter, we're Mulliganing. All right, they kept six. We Mulligan. We Powder. I'm going to keep the Golgari Grave Troll in my deck, as well as an Icarid. Done. All right, here's a double bizarre noxious stinkweed in pan. We'll keep that. All right, F6 value. My opponent takes a look at my hand. All right, this should be interesting. My opponent has full information. What are they going to do? Ancestral. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Draw. Hollow one. Not bad. Bizarre. Activate. Uh, Stinkweed Imp. Prize the Malgum. I'm going to hold my second Bazaar in case they Wasteland me. So my opponent knows my entire hand still. Which is kind of a downside, but I think that's fine. Maybe I don't need to hold my Bazaar because my opponent, because I can, you know, run Noxious Revival, but there's no reason to do that. My opponent has to just choose if they want to force a Will Hollow one or not. Um, quite possible they do. Uh, there are not that, actually that many targets to Force of Will and Dredge. You A lot of times you'll Force of Will protecting your own cards more often. But Hollow One is definitely one that can change clocks and game plans. Okay, fetch. So they're not wastelanding me. Blue, red, blue, Luris into hand. Okay. So now a question is, well, upkeep, I can still do dredging because I have so many cards. So I think we should do that. Dredge. Dredge. The question is now, do we think a strip mine is better than a bazaar? 
Nah, no shot. My poke doesn't even have the mana to play Lurus anyways. Dredge. Chill. Doesn't do anything. I really needed to hit a uh, an Arc Amoeba here to bring back Prize Amalgam or something. Yeah, I'm just going to go Bizarre. I don't think I'm supposed to play around anything. I'm just going to jam like a crazy madman. Put all the cards on the table. I think I'm going to hold on to a Dredger in case I get my graveyard taken away. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Chills and Fetchlands has put my opponent all the way down to 10 and then to 6. It's kind of crazy, right? My opponent says they misclicked on their land, which makes sense because the second Volcanic does not help them cast a Luris. That might be another like small game-losing play from my opponent, which is quite rough for them. I like think crazy. You know, I have, I have uh I have respect for Crazy Diamond's level of play, though. <laughs> it does say, chat did say uh, uh Crazy did say in chat they only slept for two hours, so that probably doesn't help your Magic the Gathering skills. All right, well I have lethal on the table and probably lethal in the graveyard, so my opponent has to kill me here. I chose not to keep Noxious Revival as my last card, which maybe could be considered a mistake. Uh, I could definitely have chosen to keep Noxious Revival as my only card, and then I'd have the ability to, like, put a fetch land on top of their library for turn. I don't know if that would be, like, enough to win the game, uh, but it definitely, like, takes cards out of the yard, makes the breach plan worse, so, uh, I could definitely see my sequencing in this turn being wrong. Uh, keeping a Noxious Revival might just be enough, um, just enough, uh, interaction to stop my opponent from killing me here so that's something to think about uh i didn't think about it enough obviously <laughs> all i was considering was like keeping second bazaar so we'll see if that comes back to bite me I don't think my opponent's misfetch is going to come back to bite them that much. I don't imagine playing Luris here is ever really like the game-winning play. It's a little late for Luris to be doing anything. Feels like you have to be looking for like a brain, uh, a breach kill or something like that. My opponent probably needs to have like Tabernacle here plus a graveyard wipe or a breach kill. Looks like they already played their land, right? So they can't have Tabernacle anymore. So maybe Time Walk into Tabernacle, wipe my lands, or just a Breach Kiln. I think we might finally get a win here. Looks pretty promising. The only thing is, I really wonder just, like, how many... What percentage of games me... They just force of will their own ponder? Is that concession? <laughs> force of will. Force of will my ponder. Force of will my force of will on my ponder. Is this just putting cards in the yard? It can't be, because they pitched a brain freeze. Brain freeze feels like an important card to winning this game. Shuffle. It feels like if they keep Brain Freeze, they ponder into Black Lotus Breach, Brain Freeze themselves. Probably there's a winning line somewhere in there. Um, But I, I don't know for sure. So we finally get a win. We'll take it. Okay, here we go. Fourth and final round. Vintage Preliminary up against the Sandy Dog. Hopefully... We can bang this out real quick. No bazaar. Try again. Have a bazaar. Keep. <laughs> this Andy Dog is notorious MTGO grinder for playing many matches of Magic at the same time. Whether it is on 
Arena or Magic Online or both at the same time. So we'll see. We'll see how fast I can get uh, the dog to play here. Let's see. All right, we've roped the Sandy Dog into the match. Let's see what happens. I'm going to keep this hand that has a Bizarro Baghdad and put back. Uh, I guess. The Ghoul. I kind of want to keep the Narcomoeba in case I hit a Force on my first activation. I think that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> Normally, I, you don't want to have Narcomoeba in your hand, but I am activating Bizarre here, drawing two. If I draw a Force of Will in my activation, then I can keep Narcomoeba and Force and pitch uh, Icarid Double Dredger. I'll be pretty happy with something like that. So. And the... Uh, whatever card I put to bottom, I didn't care that much. <laughs> I already forgot. Point of mold to five. Activate bizarre. Found a force. Look at that. Dredger. Icarid. Dredger. Pass. Sandy Dog is a, a known mono white initiative enjoyer. If they put like any kind of mox in on the stack, I'm pretty excited to just hit negation on any of them. We'll see if that is still true. Sandy Dog hasn't always been an initiative player. Sometimes in the past, oops all spells and things like oops all spells. Okay. Saga gamer today. Not a Lura Saga enjoyer though. So I expect something like Beseech Storm. So now we can hold the negation for something powerful. Though I don't know how fast my uh, cards deplete from my hand. I guess that's something I should know. Icarid on the stack. Activate Bizarre of Baghdad. Dredge a Golgari Grave Troll. Dredge a Stinkweed Imp. Get rid of a Golgari Gar 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 Grave Troll, a Stinkweed Imp, and a Golgari Thug. I hit four Creeping Chills on those dredges, so I guess I will put those all on the stack. And hit yes. Can I, like, always yes to this? Always yes. Always yes. 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 Okay, that did not help me. Okay. Notable. Notable. Right, yes. Icarid. Uh, I guess I can just eat a thug. I have plenty of dredgers. Okay. Dredge my grave troll again. Yeah. F6. My opponent is at five. <laughs> Man, the power of... Uh... The power of four creeping chills in your top 25. All right, my opponent has to win the game on this turn through a force of negation. This is how dredge is supposed to work. We figured it out. It only took us to round four to figure out how dredge works. My opponent can cast any spell here. I will negate it. Time walk, no shot. Negate that. Is the game over? Do I win? Am I recording? Hell yeah, I'm recording too easy okay my opponent is a saga gamer i am gonna go with the kind of the board plan that we did in the uh first couple of rounds where i go down on this and this and these again i have no idea if this is correct but it vimes in my mind and that is what matters hit submit Okay, I'm pretty happy about that hand, all things considered. That was a mold of six. Hitting a piece of interaction and just having the sickest dredges. To be fair, we did have the Golgari Grave Troll and Stinkweedium, the strongest dredgers in the deck. Maybe a great example of why we shouldn't re <laughs> unrestrict Golgari Grave Troll. Uh, especially, you know, in these post-board games where you get to play Force of Vigor. Kalkari Grave Troll as a green card and the best dredger of all time. Definitely something to think about. Yeah. I don't, I don't know like where else I would think about changing uh, the post-board match, uh, the boarding plan, but it seems like a good spot for me. All right. Sandy Dog has accepted the sideboarding plan. Deciding whether to play first. And then we'll battle. We still don't know exactly what the Sandy Dog is on. Because we saw a under... Sorry, we saw an Underground Sea. And we saw a Urza Saga. 
And based on my opponent's recent history, I'm going to assume Beseech Storm. We'll see, though. Okay, what happened? I don't really remember. <laughs> oh, they both get into six. I have a powder here. I'm losing out on Force, Misstep, and Hollow One, which is kind of rough, but it is what it is. Uh, I have another powder here. This one should be my one. Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. Didn't have a negation on turn one, but I have a Bazaar, Wasteland. I have a Grief. I like this hand a lot. We had to use a Hollow One, two Narc Amoebas, two Amalgams, a Chill, some Dredgers, two Hollow Ones, Force, and Misstep. So we had to use some amount of cards here to get to this hand, but it's a good one. So see how this fares. Obviously we have uh, the ability to die on turn one with this hand, but if we make it to turn one of our own, I like the spot. Opponents on a mold of five. Opponents on a mold of four. I'll just sit back and let the mulligans do the work. <sighs> Pretty optimistic about an on-the-draw opponent's mulliganing to four. I have access to grief, possible access to negation. I really like our spot. All right. Leyline of the Void has been called. Okay. Three cards plus Leyline hand from the Sandy Dog has an Urza Saga. Okay. What we don't have is a Force of Vigor currently. I think I'm interested in griefing my opponent, pitching a Thug, and then maybe Wastelanding the Saga, depending on what we see. Grief, pitch Thug. I'm going to keep Shambling Shell because I want to be able to uh, Vigor. Okay, opponent's hand contains Time Vault Mana Crypt. I think we just leave them with Time Vault, take away Mana Crypt. Do we Wasteland them? Yeah, for sure. Opponent is off it. Opponent said this is not a game worth playing. Interesting. I probably would have played this out, but... Take away their Mana Crypt, Wasteland their Saga, and then eventually we Vigor them. I just don't know how long it takes us to Vigor them. Might take a while. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a Vigor in our top, like... 30 cards here. Wait, where are all our Vigors? Do we lose it? We didn't lose any Vigors, but we still don't see a Vigor until... Wow. I don't know, opponent. Maybe a premature concession here. None of our activations contain hollow ones. We don't see a Vigor until we're, you know, 20 cards left in library. I think this is a pretty compelling example of why you don't want to scoop too early. Um, simply hitting land, land, academy, like, sorry, like hitting a second saga probably is winning from here. Like, yeah, I think a little bit of an early concession from the dog, but there's, there are other matches of magic to be played and, uh, certainly wasn't getting very much prizing out of this, uh, this finish here, but you know, we came back, we started with a nice zero two. Uh, but got two wins to get some of our money back, which is good, considering I didn't really want to play to start. Uh, what do we think about the deck list? Uh, nothing wrong with the deck list itself. I'm not in tune enough with the uh, metagame from the dredge perspective to say if there are any things that I would change in the deck list. But, but one thing I would really want to know is if my sideboarding plan was correct. We did play against multiple, what, Saga decks today? We played against three... Saga Tinker decks, probably, and one Slurus Breach deck. So, kind of an interesting metagame section. Um, not much to say. The, the only thing I like, the only thing I can say is uh, we need to figure out the exact way we're supposed to board there. But I feel like we, we're probably pretty close. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. More vintage content on this YouTube channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll see you then.